Greetings. This is Anton from Rust here with a super casual quick start guide for using that Alloy 3 beta. We're going to be going over a couple things quickly. Basically import, setup, um, project settings that you're going to want to tweak, and just a very quick introduction to a couple of the special features that come with Alloy. So let's get started by importing the uh, Alloy 3 Shaders and Editor Core Package. Should take a minute or two at most. Going to totally fast forward here while it does it. Cool, looks like it's imported. Before we play with it at all, we want to check our project settings and our, uh, our player settings and our quality settings. So let's see here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go down to edit project settings graphics and under deferred instead of built-in shader you're going to hit it to custom and then here in the project view you're going to go to alloy shaders and see this file alloy deferred shading. You're going to drop that in there. Beautiful. Next we want to double check our player settings and just double check, ooh, we're in gamma. Ugh. Make sure you're in linear. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and drop into deferred because it's awesome. And then lastly, I always start out by going into the quality settings, just nuking out all but the top one, fantastic. And then making sure that anti-aliasing is set to disabled. If you don't do this, even if you set your camera to HDR, it won't go into HDR. For some reason, it privileges the anti-aliasing settings. So make sure that's set to disabled. Then go to your main camera and hit HDR. Beautiful. And then we're going to import the, well, part of the FX standard package. I seriously don't know why they grouped these quite like this, but so let's see. We don't need glass refraction. We don't need light cookies or light flares or projector, or tessellation, or tune shading. We just want the image effects directory and the editor image effects directory up here. Let's pop those in. We probably didn't even need the whole thing. And then once that's in, we're just going to throw in uh, color adjustments tone mapping. And I tend to just go ahead also and add some anti-aliasing. Beautiful. So one last post import thing you're going to want to do is under the alloy directory, under shaders, resources, just right click just this resources folder and click re-import. The reason you need to do that is that we've got a couple default packed maps in there, but because you're importing the whole package at the beginning, the code for actually packing those correctly hasn't been loaded yet. So you have to let the alloy core load and then just re-import that directory. You should only ever have to do this once per project. We're probably gonna automate it later. Cool. Then just go ahead, just so it doesn't get in the way, make sure to open up a lighting tab. Oops, there we go. And just go ahead and turn Enlightened off, go back in your corner. You can come back out to play when you play with point lights well. So now let's go ahead and put together for ourselves just a very, very simple scene so we can see what the alloy materials look like. I'm just going to throw a quad down, zero, zero, zero. Rotate that there, scale it up, and then We'll just put a sphere there as well. I'm going to create myself a new alloy material. So just go up here, alloy. Core is the shader that you're probably going to use for well over 90% of your objects. It's just the standard one. Though it looks simple to begin with, one of the new features in Alloy 3, which is present here and on pretty much all of the shaders, is the ability to dynamically add property groups, which you can do here by either hitting the plus or the add tab down here. And we can see all of the things that we could add on to this core shader dynamically. Um, 
you can't necessarily have all of these on, but you can generally have 80 to 90% of them on something like Core before you run out of texture samplers. So we won't add any of those yet. Let's just drop this onto these two objects. Get some gloss. Give it a deeper tone there. Maybe just a touch more blue. Wonderful. And so the last thing that you should be aware of before you start playing around with alloy that's super important is our new area light system. So the way this works is when you go and create either a point light or a spotlight here, um, if you use the top menu, it's going to come automatically with uh, this component here called alloy area light. If this isn't present, say if I remove it, you're gonna see a button here called convert to area light. You always wanna make sure if you're using alloy and you have a point or a spot in your scene that it has this component on it. And this, did, this accomplishes several things. It both allows it to function as an area light, but we're also overriding the intensity and color parameters such that if you so chose, you could say, set the intensity of this up to uh, far above the uh, typical limit for it. Cool. So in terms of using this as an area light, it's very simple. There's a custom manipulator in here for it that is mapped to the sliders right here. And it's as simple as that. We can simply give the light a bunch of size. One thing to be aware of is that just because of the way this approximation works, you cannot have the volume of the area light intersecting geometry, or you're gonna get draw artifacts. Here's an example of that in action. So that's the one thing that you have to avoid fairly easy, especially considering that most of the time when you're using an area light, you're not doing it, you know, three or four meters wide. You just want to give it, you know, a couple inches, maybe 0.1 meter, something along there. And does, if you'll notice here, that ends up making the specular highlight, even on a perfectly smooth material, look far more like an IBL reflection than the standard sort of punctual highlight that we're used to. So as always, if you have any questions getting up and running on using Alloy, feel free to use our contact form on the Alloy website. And as this month progresses, we'll have a lot more in-depth tutorials uh, ready for you guys. Have fun.